my good friend, Felix Zamora uh, from University of Madrid, if I'm correct. Felix uh, is, has been working in the COF field for quite some time. Uh, and Felix will be presenting today from imine-based covalent organic frameworks and design to their processability and applications. Felix, uh, st stage is yours. We look forward to your talk. Uh, kindly stick to around 25 minutes so that I can uh, ask a few questions. And we also have a lot of questions coming online. So please help us with that. Thank you, Felix. It stays is all yours. So thank you, Raul, for the kind introduction. Yeah, it's a pity I cannot be there, but suddenly I have some familiar troubles. So yeah, but in any case, I thank you for the introduction and I thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to present the, my results, our recent results in uh, immune-based covalent organic frameworks. And I wanna focus my talk today mainly in aspects concerning processability and applications, potential applications of, of these materials once you solve this questions about processability. So yeah, oops, something is, ha is happening with my presentation. Okay, here we go. So in this first slide, I just show you the first work in which the Omar Yagi lab show us the possibility to form these new materials, covalent organic frameworks. In here, they show us the, the, the a simple, uh, conceptually simple reaction a uh, uh, condensation reaction, for instance, using diboronic acids that give us, uh, as a result uh, of the condensation, give us the formation of an extended structure in which you can observe the formation of borosine rings. And then in the same work, they show us uh, that you can combine different diboronic acids with different polyalcohols and then forming as well these 2D extended structures based on the formation of, the, of these boronate esters and rings. So all of them show this uh, when they uh, uh, stack uh, the one upon each other, they form this nice structures with uh, showing uh, these uh, channels, defining these channels in which uh, all the materials formed show permanent porosity, low density and crystallinity. Okay, uh, and why they form uh, these uh, ordered structures? Because uh, as I told you, they, they, form, they, 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 they are formed by condensation reaction. The meaning of that is that we are using covalent bonds to connect molecules and but uh, instead of forming connecting the molecules with irreversible covalent bonds, as is the typical case for many uh, uh, covalent uh, polymers, that uh, in principle because of the uh, existence of some uh, you know uh, defect, uh, structural defects, at the end of the day you produce amorphous frameworks. Instead of that, in the case of covalent organic frameworks, we connect the two molecules using dynamic covalent bonds. The meaning of that is that when you arrive to this amorphous situation, because of the uh, reversibility of these uh, bonds that we are using, you can correct the errors. For instance, in here, you can observe we have a molecule that is disconnected at that point. So you can apply uh, experimental conditions in order to correct these errors. And then you end up with this uh, nice structure, ordered structure that is the, the most stable in terms of uh, thermodynamics. So it's, it's, and then you form the core. Okay. So you can use uh, many molecules. In here, I summarize the, the some of the works uh, in which you co can combine different boronic acids with different polyalcohols. And then you can uh, end up with uh, 2D or 3D uh, structures with different pore site cavities, different architectures in the cavities, different, eventually different functionalities into the cavities. So, but, uh, all this chemistry is nice and uh, the materials that you can form uh, are uh, thermally robust, but uh, most of them uh, can suffer hydrolysis when you try to apply these materials for some particular applications. And then uh, they are not very robust. And then uh, several uh, research group, uh, groups uh, switch from boron containing to nitrogen containing cough. Because as you can see here, this uh, new imine, for instance, base cough, are, uh, uh, I'm going to show you that they are more uh, chemically more robust. So, in here, this sample that I collect from uh, Dong Yan Kim uh, lab, so they show the possibility to form this uh, extended uh, network, this cough, based on imine bonds just by condensation reaction between this dialdehyde with this triamine. 
Okay, so at the end of the day, you get this uh, nice structure. And as you can see here, uh, we have nice porosity, well-defined, uh, you know, uh, pore sites. But uh, even more importantly is that this material is uh, chemically robust. So when you immerse the material in water or even boiling water or uh, under a strong acidic or basic conditions or this long list of organic solvent, the material retain the crystallinity and the porosity. So it's not only thermally robust, but also chemically robust. So now we can think of a, a, a properties so and potential applications for these uh, uh, new uh, materials. So uh, applications, for instance, in energy, water, the contamination, uh, contaminant detection, sensing, electronics, catalysis, or gas storage and separation. So, but yeah, uh, you for sure, uh, during this uh, morning or this afternoon, uh, 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 this session, we, we, we are going to have some, some lectures concerning uh, the, how you can uh, modulate and how can you can reach cough with interesting properties. So for that, you, you will see that you will need to combine uh, the initial building block uh, properly in order to get properties, the, the properties that you want to have in your final material. Uh, and then as far as you may use uh, uh, nitrogen-based cough, you will have uh, robust materials. But if you wanna go for applications, sometimes you need to take care of processability. Is the meaning of that is you have to control the shape and the site of the cobs that you are producing. Okay, so this is a concept uh, relatively new uh, because first, as I told you, uh, uh, most of the of the research was focused on aspects concerning uh, the, the design in terms of uh, material robustness, material uh, properties, but uh, relatively uh, uh, new is the uh, relatively uh, new is the concept of this uh, processability. So around 2015, uh, some groups, uh, for instance, the group of uh, Raul Banerjee, uh, start with, the, with, the, with this idea that we have to uh, process the sun of this cough in order to, to go for real applications. Now I'm gonna focus uh, on this uh, aspect, on, on uh, processability of these humane based cops, okay? So let me show you just the most simple reaction that we typically run when you wanna get this, uh, uh, these structures. So this cough, humane based cough. Okay, you combine two building blocks, typically for instance, this is simple, uh, simple uh, trialdehyde with this simple triamine, and then you typically have to use sorbothermal conditions. And this is the most typical uh, solvent mixture that we use, dioxane mesethylene. And you have to use a catalyst, for instance, acetic acid, okay? If you do that, at the end of the day, you form this, this structure, this imine-based cough. But if you isolate the material that you produce during this reaction, you will end up with a kind of powder, like the, the, this picture, like the one that we have in this picture, okay? And this powder for many applications is useless, okay? So, but look at here, when you combine the same, same building blocks and you change the solvent, just the solvent, and we use, for instance, metacresol or demeso, and then you incorporate the catalyst in here, you will see we have the solution with the two initial components in metacresol, we incorporate the catalyst, and you will see that within a few seconds, you will form, you will end with the formation of a gel. Okay, here we go. So we form this gel, and when you try to characterize spectroscopically this gel, you can confirm, easily confirm by IR or NMR, you can confirm that you have, you form a polyimine, okay? However, this, this solid, uh, when you isolate the solid, you can confirm also that you have crystallinity and porosity. If you are interested in the morphology of the, of the, of the material that you are forming uh, into this gel, you, by using AFM, you can, uh, confirm that you are forming nanolayers with uh, uh, small thicknesses of about five nanometers and well-defined shapes. In here, you can observe these hexagonal shapes that are in agreement uh, with, the, with the crystallinity expected for this material. Take into account that we are forming a, a disk cough under a mild, very mild conditions, and in a, in within a few seconds, despite of all these uh, 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 soft conditions, we have crystallinity. Okay, and then we decided to use this, uh, this reaction to, to, to do a proof of concept experiment. And for that, we chart this cartridge 
with the two initial molecules and we select the MSO because it's much better for this particular experiment as solvent. And what we did is we, we use this Fuji D matrix inject printer to, to uh, allow to deposit our ink, particular ink on different substrates. Uh, this is the result that we got when we printed the, 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 this ink on silicon oxide. And as you can see here, we have we deposit droplets of about 15 picoliters. And in here we have different, we obtain different uh, dots, okay? When we characterize with AFN one of those dots, okay, you, you confirm that you have a dot which is with this uh, uh, diameter of about 60 microns. And if you zoom at this area with AFM, then you observe that you have a, a, the, the, the dot is composed of nanolayers of our cuff with uh, some hundred uh, nanometers of lateral dimensions and a few, this is the thickness, uh, the thickness is, is around uh, one, two nanometers. So the meaning of that is that these dots are formed by a combination of nanolayers that are aggregated in, in this dot, okay? But with this experiment, we demonstrate that it is possible to control the deposition of the, of the cups on different substrates. And this can be useful for if you wanna use the, the material uh, that you produce for, for instance, electronics. You need this control. Okay, let me focus in recent results that we produce uh, with these uh, uh, gels of uh, immune-based cough gels. Uh, we were working to produce cough aerogels. Okay, so this, uh, this process is based on two steps. So this is the first steps, in the first step in which we uh, mix the two initial building blocks. In this case, we use a solvent instead of MSO or metacresol, we use uh, acetic acid with a double function, uh, solvent and catalyst, okay? So in the first step, we form the gel. This is a picture of the gel that we form in the first step. So, uh, and then uh, the, 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 we, we, we decided to do the following. We, the gel is based on the aggregation of these nanoparticles of cobs, okay? So in here, you, you trap the solvent but you have kind of a, a macro porosity that is, is plenty of solvent. So the idea was, okay, let's try to remove the solvent, okay? Trying to retain the, the, the morphology of the gel, okay? To pass from the gel to the aerogel. And for that, we, what we did is we uh, exchanged the solvent, the acetic acid with ethanol, okay? As a, and then we dried the, the, the gel using supercritic CO2. In that way, we pass from gel to aerogels, okay? And the idea was, okay, to, to, to produce a material having two, uh, in the same uh, material, two porosities, the intrinsic porosity of the structure of the, of the cough plus the macro porosity of the gel, okay? So this uh, was possible to do with the cup with three uh, different reactions. And when we go find this reaction, the formation of the gel, in a, in a vessel with a, a specific shape, what we observe is that the shape was retained upon a, a drying. So we were able to pass from the gel to the aerogel, producing uh, these uh, shapes uh, uh, that uh, in here we, we produce monoliths, okay, of a cough aerogel. Okay, we run this reaction, we were able to run these uh, reactions with this combination of building blocks plus these two others. Okay, forming isolating uh, uh, aerolites, uh, uh, sorry, monoliths of these tough aerogels, okay, in which we observe that these materials show extremely low densities. Okay, this is just to show you some of the pictures of our cough aerogels. And this is the a slide summarizing the characterization in which you can observe by one hand that we have materials with a, a nice porosity combining mesoporosity with macroporosity. Uh, you, we, we have nice crystallinity with these three structures. And in here, you can observe the characterization by transmission electron microscopy, in which you observe the nanolayers uh, forming the 3D aerogel structure that are connecting, forming this 3D aerogel structure. And in here, by uh, scanning electron microscopy, you cannot even observe some of these macroporous uh, that you have in the, in the aerogel, okay? 
So uh, what we can do with these aerials, just as a proof of concept, we decided to use our aerials in this, in this simple experiment in which we try to remove a to a, a, a toluene from contaminated waters. And here we treat the toluene, which is on the top of the water, with a, with this, a, with a red dye just to facilitate the identification of the toluene. And then on the top of that, we put a, a, our monoliths, the three monoliths, and after several cycles, we observed that we, can re we were able to remove the whole uh, toluene from the contaminated water. So uh, we were e eventually able to recover the monoliths uh, by immersion in, in, acid, in chloroform, sorry, in dichloromethene. Uh, uh, and as you can see here, we have, these are the three monoliths and we have sorption capacities relatively nice. We were able to remove to, uh, between 25 and 35 grams of toluene per gram of cough. And if you compare this, these results with the three monoliths, with those of Tynet, with the three uh, solids from this with the same structure, you can observe these are the solids. So, and these are the three monoliths. You can observe that we dramatically enhance the sorption capacity of the material, probably because the macroporosity facilitates the molecular access to the toluene. Okay, in this uh, in this uh, arrow gels. Okay. So another interesting aspect that we observe in, during the characterization of our uh, monoliths is the following. We, we were trying to characterize the mechanical properties of the, of the monoliths by uh, compression, okay? And what we observe, uh, compressing the monoliths, as in here, okay? We observe that when we apply a relatively low strain, below, let's say, 30%, uh, we enter into a uh, elastic uh, uh, and reversible regime. So this is reversible. While when you apply a, a, a further a strain, you pass from elastic to elastomeric. The meaning of that is that you, of course, the density uh, enhanced by a factor of three, but you pass from, from a monolith to a kind of membrane. This is the final material. You, you enter into a flexible, membrane okay and okay uh, we thought okay we have you know a material a membrane that shows nice gastrosion high surface area why we don't try to to use this uh, uh, this material this membrane uh, for something useful gas separation for instance and with the help of uh, professor dan Thao from national university of singapore we produced these uh, three different me membranes coming from the compression of the aerogels. Uh, uh, the, the, the main difference in, the, in, in between the three structures is that you modulate the cavity size, okay, passing from 1.2 up to 3.4 nanometers. Okay, when we try to use these freestanding membranes for the gas separation of these mixtures, CO2 methane, CO2 nitrogen, we observe that we have a nice gas pair selectivity for this membrane uh, formed with the cough uh, uh, showing this uh, cavity site 1.9 nanometer because in that case we we, we think that we have a nice uh, interaction between the co2 and the and the nitrogen of the mean structure uh, this uh, uh, chemical sorption we have chemical sorption but still we have uh, room for the uh, permeability of the methane and nitrogen, and this allows us to have this nice gas per selectivity. If you uh, uh, analyze our results, uh, taking into account the upper bond limits, the Robertson upper bond limits, we observe that we have uh, uh, several membranes with much higher CO2 permeability than even some commercial membranes, and we are close to these limits. So, uh, okay, the, this first result was quite quite nice. Okay, what can we do additionally with these membranes? So in this uh, work in collaboration with uh, Professor uh, uh, Jorge Rodriguez and Pilar Ocon, we produce uh, three uh, different cups with the same structure. Okay, we produce cup containing into the cavities some quantities, controlled quantities of acetic acid and one containing lithium chloride. The idea was to, make, to, to get materials with a nice uh, uh, ionic uh, conductivity. And here I showed you the result that we got. They were relatively good, okay? Indeed, uh, this result was quite good, uh, but uh, okay, we thought, okay, we have nice ionic uh, conductivity. Why we don't use these materials 
as uh, proton exchange membranes in this fuel cell configuration. Okay, and for that you, you need a membrane, of course. And uh, we, we, we were able to produce flexible membranes with those having into the cavities acetic acid. But for the case of the lithium chloride, we were unable to form membranes, but we had, we formed a pellet. Okay, then we, uh, after compression, we, 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 we tested the materials and we observed at the end of the day that we have nice power density for those materials uh, uh, in which we were able to, to perform the experiment with these flexible membranes. But even when the, when the material having lithium chloride into the cavity has the best uh, uh, high unit conductivity, we had a, a worse performance in terms of power density and current density than in, in the other cases. Probably this was, uh, we obtained this result because uh, the, the excellent mechanical properties of the two membranes with, uh, uh, from the cough containing acetic acid uh, enhance, uh, can enhance the performance uh, work uh, when you use these materials as a proton exchange membranes. Okay. So yeah, uh, so far uh, so good, but uh, if you realize we just have three samples. So uh, very recently, uh, uh, we, we decided, I mean, uh, when, you, when we, we observe that when we try to produce uh, uh, new gels, uh, for many cases, we fail. So then we decided to, to, to do something else in order to produce gels and aerogels with new structures, okay, with other structures. And then what we, what we solved the problem uh, uh, using this, uh, this uh, concept. So first in here, this is the initial, uh, this is this library, initial library we call. And then uh, uh, we formed first a gel with of this initial library. Okay. And then in a second step, once you have the gel format, then you can substitute, you can do a monomer chain reaction in the gel form and then substitute one of the components. And then you arrive to a new structure. So you pass from imine to ketoenamine, for instance. And then once you have the gel, then you can apply a solvent change, a separate CO2 drain, and then you can form the monolith of the cough area. So you, you can do something else. So we run different reactions in here uh, uh, to, to pass from imines to ketoenamine uh, cops. Uh, by substitution of the of the of aldehydes and, and in here as you can see you can also run the reaction to first uh, substitute the not the aldehyde but the amine and secondly you can uh, eventually do a double substitution and then once you form the gel you can substitute the the, 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 the gel with the with the substitution of the amine you can substitute the aldehyde and then you you form a new structure and you can uh, run many many different reactions in here we we got an, uh, we we do a partial substitution of one of the components, and then we also insert uh, functionalities into the cavity. So now we are able to uh, uh, form uh, very uh, uh, different cough aerogels, a lot of different structures of cough aerogels. Okay, and let let me finish my talk just showing you uh, very recent results that we have trying to 3D printing uh, these uh, imine-based coughs. Okay. And in order to do that, what we uh, we we started with this work uh, that we previously uh, carried out in collaboration with Professor uh, Josep Puig Martí from Bar Universidad de Barcelona, in which we observe that we can uh, form cough and mobs, uh, uh, indeed nanoparticles of cough and mobs, uh, using this uh, uh, simple reaction in water at room temperature. But using a kind of a flexible nano reactor based on uh, micelles that we formed using a combination of these uh, two surfactants, CT, CTV and SDS. Okay, when we form the, uh, these uh, nano reactors and then we mix the two initial building blocks upon uh, several hours, we form we observe that we form, uh, for instance, this cough. Okay, with this in uh, structure. Okay. And if you characterize uh, the cough, for instance, for uh, using DLS, uh, you, you can observe that we, you have a hydrodynamic uh, a diameter of about, let's say, below 20 nanometers, okay? 
So this is the final result of this reaction, which is which consists of a water color, okay? So, and it's pretty stable. As you can see here, uh, uh, six months later, uh, we have uh, about the same. Okay, this is just to show you very, very briefly, because we are uh, with a uh, short time. This is the characterization of the, of the nanoparticles. Okay, you have crystallinity coming from this colloid, and you have uh, ordered structures, and you have porosity, you have uh, everything. And then uh, why I'm telling you this, because we observe that when you uh, work with this uh, water colloid and you add to this water colloid uh, ethanol, you can observe, you can control nanoparticle aggregation of this material, okay? And then we thought, okay, why when we don't try to use this to 3D print our material? And we set up this, uh, uh, this uh, experiment. In here, we have a, a microfluidic controller this is a microfluidic reactor, and this is a 3D printer that we modify. Okay, we, uh, so we change the tip of the of the 3D printer, and instead of a typical uh, tip, we put our microfluidic reactor. This is the microfluidic reactor that we design, that uh, uh, in which we try to control. This is the cough uh, colloid, water cough colloid, and uh, uh, going from this channel, the central channel, and we incorporate in the other channel the alcohol. The idea was to do something like that. Okay, we incorporate the alcohol, then we will produce the, the, the aggregation of the cough. And if we move at the time, at that time, the, the tip of the of the 3D printer, we probably can print our cough. And this is the experiment. This is the, in here you observe the, the tip moving and forming the 3D structure. You can also observe that we run the, the, the experiment in a pool containing uh, alcohol. And the idea to, to, to do that is because in that way, we, we eliminate the, the, sulfant, the sulfatans that is coming with the, with the initial nanoparticles. So in that way, at the end of the, the process, you have these, these gels, which are based on just the cough. So we don't have a sulfatan in here. And then you can eventually activate the, these structures and pass from the gel to the aerogels. And then this is the last structure. They are chemically robust. They show crystallinity. They show porosity. And uh, we already have run these uh, uh, these uh, experiments for these two structures. Okay, so this is uh, the end of the talk. Uh, I hope uh, uh, my key message is that okay, nanoprocessability, the control of the aggregation of of the particles, is a key aspect in order to to get uh, you know shapes uh, uh, suitable shapes for application of our cough materials okay so let me thanks all these long list of collaborators and people from my group that uh, are involved in this in this project uh, and of course the rest of the group uh, and, and thank you very much for your kind uh, uh, attention and i'm ready for questions thank you Thank you, Felix. Uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, in the interest of time, uh, maybe we can take one question. If Okay, so I do have a question from the online chat. Uh, so I will just read it for you. So the gentleman, Vijay Kumar, he is asking that during the time of the reaction, uh, are you sure that the aldehydes are not trapped in the pore? And uh, if so, then how do you uh, get rid of those aldehydes uh, during purification? Uh, can you repeat it? I can. <clears throat> I listen poorly. Okay. Yeah. Those, those building blocks are uh, are they trapped inside the pore during the synthesis of those gels? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. I'm I'm sure because we characterize uh, the first the, the the you know the porosity. Uh, at the end of the process, and the porosity it, it was pretty, pretty high. So if you have some uh, uh, molecules, initial molecules on the on the on the pores, yeah, so you will observe this happen from this happen at the beginning, at the very beginning to 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 us, and we observe a dramatically decrease of the porosity by one hand. By the other, when we run the the, the NMR characterization, solid state NMR using carbon NMR or, or, or uh, proton NMR, you will be able to observe even IR will give you uh, uh, the, the, the presence uh, of these uh, initial molecules. So, yeah. Questions from the audience? Well, 
Okay, if not, thank you very much, Felix, for this wonderful lecture. And thank you all. And thank you so very much. And let's join. Thanks to thanking Felix. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Raul. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.